Okay, so like uh, I just thought I thought I'd talk a little bit about obsessive thinking and obsessive thoughts, and that's quite uh, common with uh, with addictions. Uh, having an obsessive thought um, can often be in like a romantic context. You know, you're thinking of a person. You can go off into romantic fantasy, or it could be alcohol, it could be food, it could be behaviour, it can also be a country. But you can have these special thoughts which seem to intrude, and you can't seem to get rid of them because they're 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 special. And the way I would deal with those types of thoughts is um, a tool that I do, which is the observer. I go to the observer. So how do I do that? Let's say I started to get like a romantic thought about, say, a woman or something like that. And then it became like an obsessive thought or a fantasy that was going on. So the, the tool that I like to do with that is what I call the observer. So the thing I would ask myself is, there's obviously a me, like a set, my ego. My ego, what is my ego? My ego is my sense of self, my individuated sense of self, which is interested in this thought of this person. So what I would do then is ask myself, what am I? What am I right now? So I wouldn't go to the thought, I'd forget the thought. There's a me, a sense of a meanness which is interested in the thought. So what am I? So I'd ask, well, how am I experiencing myself in this moment? And it would be like, oh yeah, I have a sense of myself as a kind of um, a location around this area. Then I'd ask myself, well, what's observing, what's observing the sense of me? And there's a witnesser. There's like an observer. I can see, oh yeah, there is an observing of the sense of me. And as soon as I go to that observer, then the observer of the sense of me, the, the fantasy or the obsession will disappear because I'm, not, I'm now going to that which is witnessing the sense of me. So the witnesser, the detached witnesser of me, has no interest in thought. Okay? So that's how I do it. Or... Can I just ask them? Yes, please like, do. But don't you have to kind of want to go there or, you know, have the intention to go there? To go where? To the observer. Yes. But if one can be lost in something, then... How do you get to the yeah. observer? Okay, so, well, this is the... Okay, so if, if you're, like, lost in uh, fantasy for long periods of time or obsession for long periods of time, then uh, you can do, like... Like I've shared many times, I have a watch where you have something that reminds you at regular intervals throughout the day to break it. So you can, you can go to the observer. Or otherwise, one of my favourite spiritual teachers is Muji, who teaches the observer, just be the witnesser. Go to the witnesser or the observer. So I wouldn't go to the, like for me, I wouldn't go to the observer of, the, well, you can try the observer, there's no point. So let's say I'm having an obsession about a person so I could go to the, what's, what's observing? But yeah, that could work as well. So what's observing the thoughts of obsession? And then being the observer, so you then probably the observer will be what's I, what I'd call the, an interested observer. So the observer would still be, have a, an interest in the thoughts. So then see if there is an observer observing the observer. Is there an observer that's observing the observer which has no interest in the interested observer. So then that would then disappear the obsession because you're now going to that obs observation of self which has no interest in self. Okay? So this is an experiential exercise. Because when you're in when you're in the ego, then you're giving it carte blanche to identify with the thoughts. But if you're going to the observer of the thoughts and the observer of the ego, you're you're detaching from the source of interest being given externally. Or if there's an observer which has interest in the thoughts, then go to the observer of the observer which has no interest in the interested observer. So then that would just cut the power to what's been given externally and being identified with. That's one way of doing it. That's the way I wouldn't do it. 
you see, like, let's say I'm interested in a girl, then I would go, like, who's the me? And is, is the me here? Is it located somewhere? Is it a, is it, do I have a location? Is it a feeling, a sense of me? Then what's observing the me? Then immediately the observer of the me is actually prior to that which has the capacity to actually be interested in thoughts. Yeah? Does that make sense? Um, I think at that time you get lost. Yeah. Just in the last sentence. So there's two, there's two ways to do the observer. Yeah. So one is... Okay, can I, can I, do, <coughs> can I do it with you? How do you experience yourself right now? I'm listening to you and I'm also having other thoughts. Okay, so you're experiencing yourself as thoughts. Mm -hmm. So that, so something is here which is observing, thought, observing thoughts. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of it? That which is observing your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you, are you the observer of your thoughts or are you thought, your thoughts right now? Now the observer. Okay. Is there can I just take you around with me everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, done. no. That's a thought. You see, you've just gone back into your thoughts. Yeah. So you see, like, like if you so you've done it correctly. So if, let go of the fantasy for a second and just ask yourself, what am I? So you just said it. I, I see myself as thoughts. I'm just you're just thinking all over the place, aren't you? So then become aware of that which is observing the thoughts. So you then become there's an observer of the thoughts. So, if you and if you just be the observer of your thoughts, all the thoughts will disappear, and aut automatically the obsessions disappeared at the same time. You see that? You, you're trying to understand it, but if you just did it, like mm -hmm. at that time that you were the observer, there was no fantasy. Mm -hmm. That's it. So I find that to be to be the easiest way, because. If you don't do the observer, most other things are going to be much slower. Um, so, like the Course in Miracles has um, the Course in Miracles has the thing of like you look at each object and say it's meaningless. So you'd have a photo. I mean, you can do that, but it's a slow way. So you can have a photo of the person, and you can look at the photo for one second and say that 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 photo is meaningless. And then you look at the cup for one second and say the cup is meaningless. And then you look at the chair for one second and you say the chair is meaningless. You keep going in rotation. And so you're letting go of the habitual interest that the ego is projecting. It's projecting specialness onto that image. But actually, it's no more special than a table. It's no more special than a light bulb. It's no more special than a plant. So you look at each one for one second and say, it's meaningless. So that's another way to, to disengage. Another thing to realize with um, things is if you, if you, and this is important with addiction, if you look at something with interest and project specialness onto it, each time you're doing that, you're growing the addiction. Yeah. So like if I was addicted to donuts and I would look at the donuts with, with, with like greed or lust or something, then the energetic power of that is becoming stronger. So I have to like cut, you know, you have to, so you, you don't want to be mindful to cut the energy to that thought. But that's going to be difficult, you know, because you have to remember to cut the energy all the time. Or you have to try and think of something else, or just do the Course in Miracles lesson, say it's meaningless. Or you could do, I cancel my belief, God did not create a special, whoever it is, and so it's not real. God did not create a special, that's going to be a slow way. So going to the observer, you can cut it straight away. Okay, so if you're in full-blown obsession with somebody or something or alcohol, whatever it is, then having a watch or a reminder throughout the day to regularly remind you to go to the observer uh, would be good. Um, failing that if it's uh, an addictive uh, obsession, then just joining the appropriate 12-step fellowship that deals with that would be supportive. Um, just, you know, be, being aware, you know, 
there's a 12 step program where I go where they have this thing where if you're having an obsession with someone they, they say and this is not really that amazing but it's a good it's a good rule of thumb you're not allowed to engage in more than three seconds before you have to cut it and, and think of something else because if you just spend too much time on that obsession it gains momentum and becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and then usually you act out on the behaviors that are, that are uh, associated with whatever fantasy is going on. So you do it that way. But I think the, the observer, a continual willingness to, um, to practice or to spiritually grow. Um, but I think if it's something like an obsession, like having a watch regularly throughout the day, having regular practice periods, um, but of all the ones I, I would use, I think the Observer is the best in that one for the fastest progress. If it's really, really powerful, then you have to use the slower ones. You know, like cancelling beliefs, looking around, saying it's meaningless. Just being mindful that you're not spending too much time thinking or obsessing around the thing. Or if that doesn't work, then joining a 12-step fellowship to get the added power and support of a group dedicated to releasing whatever it is one is obsessed about. Uh, the other thing to do, uh, of course, yes, is listen. You know, I have my favorite spiritual teachers on YouTube. Something, some, one of the things I do, actually, is if, like, let's say I'm feeling fear, I'll just, um, I, I can, you know, I'll use YouTube and my favorite spiritual teachers, and I'll just put the two things together. Like, one of my favorite teachers is Muji. So I'll put, if, if it's fear, I'll put Muji fear in YouTube and listen to him talking about how to do the observer with fear, you see. Or if it's uh, Muji and romantic fantasy. So you know, I'd listen to him. Usually if I listen to him doing the guided observer, things disappear really quickly. So that's like having an enlightened teacher with you. Or some people might like Eckhart Tolle or, or whoever, you just put them on that's probably better to listen to them than your own obsessions. So that's another way. I also have lots of YouTube videos. Some people actually want to listen to my YouTube videos. So I have like videos and all kinds of things. So you can have that as a loop. But I've done that. I have like material from Dr. Hawkins. Dr. Hawkins has like talks on available and audible, audible on various topics like alcohol addiction or health and healing. Um, Muji has them on YouTube, so that's another way of release. Is that helpful? Yeah, so um, that's one way to let it go.